Hello, Lorelai. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited for you to share your story. So why don't we start out by you telling everyone just a little bit about um, yourself, like, you know, who you are, where you live, a little bit of background. Yeah, sure. So I am from a small town in Ontario. It's called Font Hill. It's close to Niagara Falls, Toronto, for those of you that aren't familiar with, uh, with Ontario, but uh, yeah, a really small town. And for work, I'm a, I'm a registered social worker and I am currently doing therapy with teens, young adults and families. And I absolutely love my work. It's amazing. I, uh, I own my own private practice and I've been doing that for about a year now. And uh, so I opened it, you know, right in the middle of COVID <laughs> and took the leap. And I honestly haven't looked back. It's the best work I can, I, I've done so far. And yeah, I uh, love my clients, love my job. Um, I also, yeah. And I, and I also have a daughter, she's 14 months old, um, you know, developing all that little attitude that they get (laughs) when they hit toddlerhood. So yeah, she's, uh, she's growing super fast and I'm happy with my job and all that. I I have the flexibility to be home with her more. So just kind of worked out. Great. That's so nice. Can you tell everyone a little bit about what your frustrations were with your body before? um, Yeah, before we started working together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I really struggled to accept my body day to day. I was caught in that trap of, you know, always wanting more to be better, to be smaller, um, you know, to, to be more fit, to be healthier. And it was this constant cycle of, you know, achieving a goal, feeling that very fleeting sense of satisfaction. And then I was on to the next and nothing ever really stuck. Um, so, you know, I, I always thought with a smaller body that would make me happy, that would meet all of my emotional needs, but, uh, in, in my journey, you know, certainly the opposite was, was true. It kind of took me farther away from getting to where I wanted to be, which was just to be content and accepting and happy with who I was. Um, so, you know, I'm still working today. I'm still kind of on that journey and I don't think it'll ever end. One of the most insightful things I think you've, I've heard you say summer is, you know, it's not a destination. It's a, it's a practice. And so I've really kind of harnessed that and it's just, you know, day by day, take it day by day. And I'm in a much better place than I am now. And so grateful that I've, you know, learned what I have and I'm able to pass that on to people in my life. And, you know, certainly my daughter, when she grows up and, and she can, you know, have a better sense of self and more kind of um, grounded sense of self. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And so what made you want to change? Like when you were in that struggle, was there anything that that happened or was it Mm -hmm. kind of just like, you know, now is the time, what, what made Mm -hmm. you want to make that change to, to kind of go off that diet cycle? Yeah. So, um, I had an eating disorder, um, oh my gosh, probably years ago now, years ago. And so in that struggle with, with having an eating disorder, I kind of got to the point where I just, you know, I was, I wasn't sleeping. I was super irritable. My hair was falling out. I had all of those symptoms. And I just kind of said to myself, enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. This was supposed to make me happy. This was supposed to give me the life I wanted. And I'm miserable. I hate every moment of every day. And so that for me was kind of the the light bulb that went off in my head to start this journey. And so I, um, I, I got my eating, I treated my eating disorder. I recovered from that and I was living an intuitive eating lifestyle. I ended up getting pregnant and, you know, all was well. And then when I had my daughter, I remember so clearly the day I had my daughter, 
she was, she was born. And then I went into the bathroom and I checked my stomach to see, is it back to where it was before? And so that was another kind of big insight for me because I had thought that, you know, I had you know overcome this eating disorder. I was good. I was in a better place, but I really had just done one piece of the puzzle to heal my relationship with food. There was the whole, you know, emotional, behavioral and psychological piece that I hadn't even really touched. And so at that moment, I, um, I, I continued and I, and I found you and I started working more on, you know, not so much the eating and movement piece, but the psychological, emotional and behavioral piece, which I think is just as if not more important than the other components. Um, and I, and I, I remember very clearly, we didn't know that we were having a girl until the day she was born. And so she was born and I was petrified. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm having, like, we have a girl. This is horrible because, you know, of all the things that I had struggled with. But now I can really say that I'm, I'm so happy. And I, you know, I'm, I'm so excited for her to grow up to really see, you know, how amazing life can be and to not be, tied down by this constant desire to make yourself smaller. Um, so I have, yeah, I think out of all of that too, came a greater appreciation for um, just finding out who you are in this journey and then being able to kind of pass that on to her. So I'm not sure if that makes sense, but <laughs> yes, absolutely um, yeah, it does. yeah. I, yeah, I always talk about kind of like, you know, leaving like changing the legacy or, you know, like leaving a different legacy behind. And I, I think it does, you know, give you a lot of fuel to do the work mm-hmm. for yourself when you have some, another human that you're responsible for. And you see, like, it helps you see things from a different perspective. I think it totally does. It totally does. And um, yeah, I, I never really thought, you know, and, and now that I kind of think about it leading up to birth I had those thoughts too I was like oh my gosh I just I I hope I don't have a girl I hope I don't have a girl you know this world I cannot raise a girl in this world that she can't you know be raised the same way as I was and she can't experience the same things that I did and you know now it's so like I'm so of course you know the day the moment she came out I fell in love with her but there was that fear that was looming and um you know now it's totally shifted and I'm embracing like I almost embrace all of the um messages we get from society because I'm able to now see them at in a in a different way and I'm aware that you know they're they're made to make us feel insecure and so I can teach that to her because I have that awareness I can teach that to her and that is what makes me really happy amazing I love it I love Mm -hmm. it did you have any like fears or hesitations before um before doing this work like was there anything that like kind of you know made you held you back I think just um, not necessarily a fear, but whether I could really do it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I kind of, again, I keep in the back of my mind that this is a practice, not a destination. And so even on the hardest of days, I would just take it moment by moment. And um, I found it was really helpful for me to just accept where I was on any given day. So even if I accepted that I didn't like where I was at on that day, it was still an element of acceptance versus kind of adding more criticism and expectation and pressure to say, I should be accepting of myself um, because then that kind of adds another layer of just criticism and unrealistic expectations. So that was really helpful just to, um, find a level of acceptance I could resonate with each day, find a level of self-compassion I could resonate each day with each day, and then just go with that. And then tomorrow was going to be different, but just kind of focus on, you know, what can I believe for myself today and use yeah. today? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so you mentioned something so important there just about, you know, the practice of acceptance and accepting where you're at. Um, were that, was there anything else, like any other kind of, you know, elements in, in our, that really helped you move forward in, in the program? Mm -hmm. in the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the, the self-compassion and gratitude, um, was really helpful for me and not, 
um, you know, not forcing it, but again, because when we force it, it just feels insincere. It just doesn't feel right. And so really kind of finding what fit for me on any given day, listening to that inner wisdom. Um, and the other piece too, is really separating, you know, the thoughts that have been ingrained in my brain that I thought were true and that I thought would, you know, take me towards the life that I wanted separating those from what I truly think at my core and what I believe at my core. And the more that I found I've listened to that inner wisdom and followed that inner wisdom and my intuition, the happier I am. And, uh, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost just like, it's much easier now. It's, it's more effortless than it was before. I think at the beginning, I was really trying to, I really had to kind of do more thinking in the sense of figuring out which thoughts were my own and which thoughts had come from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But because there's that, you know, feeling associated with each that, you know, the feelings that are associated with my intuition and my inner wisdom feel good. They feel solid. They feel, um, right. You know, that, that helped me kind of figure out which ones were actually my own and which thoughts I could listen to. And, and, you know, which of those other thoughts that just made me feel stuck and made me feel bad about myself, which thoughts I could kind of separate from in that moment. So yeah. that was another really helpful piece um, from your program as well, in terms of accessing that wisdom and then, you know, noticing those inner critic thoughts and separating them from them in the moment. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes. I love that. I love that. It's such a huge piece of it. And it sounds like you put a lot of work into like, you know, tuning into that and, and trusting, you know, like being mm -hmm. able to, you know, trust your inner wisdom. Cause I know that that was something that, um, you know, it's not always easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think for so long, we're taught to not trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're taught that when we're hungry, we're, we aren't going to eat. And we're taught that, um, you know, we can't trust what our body is telling us if we need rest or if, you know, what we need on any given day. And so that building that trust back up takes a little bit of time, but, you know, that wisdom is always there. I, you know, I find comfort in knowing that that wisdom is always there. I just have to kind of wait for it to show itself. Um, it never really leaves us. It just kind of gets buried by all those other thoughts. And so if I just let those thoughts pass, let those thoughts settle, that wisdom, it does shine through. And, and I, and, you know, I can find comfort in knowing that it's always there. Amazing. I love that. I love that. So um, what are some other specific things, if you can think of any, I know you've mentioned a lot of great things already, but just that you've mm -hmm. noticed about how you feel in your body since, since, uh, since doing the program and working together. Yeah. So, um, I, I noticed that, you know, I have much less thoughts around, um, being just around my body in general, I guess, even like, you know, um, liking certain aspects of it or disliking certain aspects. I think just those in general have diminished, you know, there's days certainly where I'm vulnerable and, and in your program, we talk about this all the time, you know, in the sense that when you're tired, when you're hungry, <laughs> when you're um, sad or when you're anxious, you know, that, that inner critic can come back, but just being able to, again, harness that awareness to know, Hey, I'm not doing so great. My inner critic is telling me that I need to go, you know, run for an hour. What do I actually need instead? Um, and so that can help me really just give my body what it needs. And, and my body is much happier. I can, I can say my, my body is, you know, it just feels better. I don't really know. It's, it's hard to describe, but it just kind of feels like neutral. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're good. We're just like hanging out here. <laughs> yep. Amazing. Were there any like, um, highlights for you, like being able to, I don't know, do something or like see a picture of yourself or anything like that, that like. Um, stood out as as being different than it had been in the past um I think that for me like I really just have to say the highlights come from having all of those insights along the way like mm -hmm. it's not this big you know I'm trying to describe it but it's not this big like grand realization it's you know, little things along the way of, you know, seeing someone in public and not comparing yourself to them mm -hmm. um, or seeing a picture of myself. I, this actually, yes, this happened the other day. I, I was going through my wedding photos and normally I'd be like, oh, I look so different, you know, all this stuff that we feel, but um, I connected with the day versus how I looked. I, I connected with remembering how I was so happy on that day. 
And that was, I think, a first for me, um, because normally I would kind of look and compare and get caught up in that. So Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Those are big things though, you know, like we talk about them as little things, but those little things <laughs> accumulate into big, you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're always kind of doing those things, then it's big. And yeah. so to have that shift, I think is, yeah, it, it happens kind of subtly. I, when I talk about this, I, you know, you probably remember me talking about this when we started, it's just the changes happen kind of subtly. They're not like mind blowing, like you said, but they are big changes when you reflect on it to be able to. Yeah, like, you're absolutely all, right. And not yeah. have that like intense negativity like it's emotionally draining to have that all the time yeah and I think because just the the I feel more neutral those things they don't seem like that big of a deal because I'm just not really even thinking about that much anymore so um for someone listening who you know might be caught up in that I can absolutely validate that it is a huge thing. Um, and, you know, to add to it, it doesn't, uh, it, it just feels natural. Like it just feels so natural that it's, it's easier. And, um, you know, you can just kind of live your life and focus on what's important to you, which was another really important aspect of your program in terms of using your values as your roadmap, as your compass versus, you know, um, achievement or Mm -hmm. you know reaching an expectation so that was another important component too amazing amazing so how does this all feel for you like what's it like to you know be where you are now and have this baggage off of your shoulders yeah um I, I it feels much better honestly I you know there are days of course where it's harder And I'm not going to say that it's easy all the time, but Mm -hmm. I can say that I'm having more easier days and more neutral and just fun days than I'm than not. So I think that that's a big win. And, um, you know, it's when I do have those days that that are a little bit tougher, if stuff's going on, I can really just use that awareness to look into what's going on underneath that criticism and, and, you know, what's kind of causing that versus getting caught up in listening to those thoughts. So it feels lighter. It feels good. It it feels freeing. It's, uh, it feels normal. Like this just, I just feel like myself. I I don't, uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't, if I can be authentic and, and it just feels good. That's so great. I mean, it's, you've got like an amazing career that you love. You've got a daughter, like, and it, to me, I'm just like, I'm just so thrilled that you get to be present and feel like yourself in that because, yeah. um, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard when like almost like other aspects of our life are, are so good, but we're really struggling. We don't get to enjoy it to its fullest extent. So it sounds to me like, um, you know, you're able to like, just live fully in this great life that you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really, I I just want to thank you so much because I think, you know, your program was really able to tie in everything at the beginning of my journey to kind of heal my relationship with food and my body and movement. Um, Your program tied it all together and it just was, that was it for me. So yeah, I really appreciate it. Amazing. I'm so, so grateful. What's uh, one piece of advice that you have to leave everyone with that's listening today? Yeah. So I would just say, take it day by day, um, wherever you're at on any given day, you can, you know, start to, to kind of accept that and show yourself a little bit of compassion, give yourself some credit. You know, our world is full of messages telling us that we're not good enough, not just with our bodies, but, you know, with our job, with our family, with being a parent and you're really doing the best you can. And, um, you know, it, if you want it, if you want to change it and you don't feel great about it, then you have the power to do that. You do, certainly have that strength within you. So, you know, just take it day by day and see where you're at. Yeah. I love that. So important. Mm-hmm. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for being here. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. It's been, it's been, it's like just so lovely to see um, how far you've come in, in a few months and, um, and where you're at in this and like that you're, you know, going to, bring this into your work and with your daughter and it's like it's just so amazing to know that 
it will have that, that ripple effect. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm thrilled and, and really, really grateful that you came into my life. So thank you, Lorelai. Oh, thank you, Summer. Rock on.